sudden severe stabbing headache on the temples or the back of the head could be a sign of giant cell arteritis, a condition that is usually treated with prednisone. Hi, I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist, and I'm here to tell you all about giant cell arteritis, the treatments, the side effects of the treatments, and potential future treatments that might be available, plus what you can do about the side effects. So first of all, what in the world is giant cell arteritis? Well, another name for it is temporal arteritis, meaning the temporal side of the head. There are arteries there that can get inflamed. It's a form of vasculitis, a swelling of the blood vessels that can cause blindness, strokes, and aneurysms that can be fatal. And so it is a dangerous condition where the blood vessels are just getting swollen and having inflammation that is painful and can cause fatal complications. So we need treatment and that treatment is prednisone. So what are the symptoms you might also experience? I mentioned the severe headaches, usually on the side or maybe the back of the head. There can be scalp tenderness. There can be jaw pain or tenderness when being rubbed and when chewing. There can be vision problems such as double vision or vision loss or blurred vision. There can be flu-like symptoms such as fatigue, fever, or loss of appetite. The symptoms can come on suddenly or they can come and go, making it really hard to diagnose this condition. So what causes giant cell arteritis? Well, nobody really knows, but there are some things that are associated with the diagnosis, such as older age. Most people are in their 70s or 80s when they are diagnosed with this. It's almost exclusively diagnosed over the age of 50. Women are two to three times more likely to have to deal with GCA, which is what I'm going to call it from now on, than men. If you have a family history of the condition, that can be another predisposing factor. And if you've got other immune system dysfunction going on in your body, other autoimmune conditions, they can kind of relate to each other and kind of build on each other. And if you've got one, you might get another. So how would you know if you have giant cell arteritis or GCA? Well, first of all, the doctor would do some blood tests and the blood tests would check for this inflammation. And there's the two main blood tests, erythrocyte sedimentation rate or ESR and C-reactive protein or CRP. And they are tests to see how much inflammation markers are in your blood. And if they're high, then it's probably because of this inflammation and swelling that's happening in the giant cell arteritis area. But those blood tests can be the signs of other kinds of inflammation too. So that's really not enough to diagnose it. They can also do ultrasounds of the arteries to see if they're swollen or inflamed. They can do other fancy imaging tests such as magnetic resonance angiography or positive emission tomography tests or PET scans. The best way to definitively diagnose is to get a biopsy. That means they have to like cut out a tiny piece of it and test to see if it's showing these giant cells in that artery. So if you find out you actually do have GCA, what are the treatment options? Well, first of all, prednisone. Now this is prednisone 20 milligrams, and this is considered to be a high dose, but not a really high dose, just kind of a baseline high dose. 10 milligrams below is generally considered to be low dose. And so 20 milligrams is high. What's the treatment dose for GCA? It's 40 to 60 milligrams. So that's two to three times more than a high dose. So you're getting a lot of this medication and it's because it's saving your vision, saving your life. That's probably worth it for most people who definitively have GCA. It's helping the, the headaches go away. It's helping the blurry vision and things like that go away so you can function and not be worried about the headaches and potential loss of life. And so they'll start you out at 40 to 60 milligrams and hopefully they will taper down. That means they'll take your dose down slowly over time. And the reason they want to do that is because this medication is very harmful. One neurologist called it the most hated drug in the world because it works so well and you really have no other option besides taking it, but it causes so many side effects. I personally had to take it in high dose, a uh, high dose roller coaster over eight to nine months. And these are the side effects I personally suffered. 
I had weight gain. I had moon face. I couldn't recognize myself in the mirror. I had insomnia. I had cranky emotional roller coasters. I had muscle loss. My arms and legs were skinny and my belly was big. I looked like I was pregnant again, even though I just barely lost all the baby weight. I had blurry vision. And so that was really confusing. Like if you're getting blurry vision from this drug, but also the condition can cause blurry vision, which one is it? I had little tremors and shaky feelings. It was really hard to take this medication. And I honestly wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, but it saved my life. And so it was worth it to me. And because GCA is a life-threatening condition, a vision-threatening condition, it's worth it. But the goal is to get you on the lowest effective dose, whatever that is for you. It's not the same for everyone. So whether that's 40 milligrams, 14 milligrams, or four milligrams, whatever we can get you on that is keeping you symptom-free from the condition, but minimizing the amount of steroid you're exposed to over time because prednisone is a corticosteroid, a steroid, a glucocorticoid. It is all of those things and it is causing side effects. And the side effects are worse with the more milligrams of drug you're exposed to in your lifetime. So we want to keep it as low as possible. And we wanna do whatever we can to minimize the consequences of that. So the doctors who prescribe prednisone the most, the rheumatologists, they recommend lots of things to help. So one of those things is weight loss, which is really hard when you're taking a drug that's making you want to eat and gain weight. They also recommend exercise. They recommend supplementing with calcium and vitamin D to help support your bones. And that's really important. Um, if you're going to be on this high of a dose for that long, you need to be doing all you can, especially when you're the stereotypical GCA patient who's 72 and female and probably Caucasian. That means you are at a very high risk for osteoporosis. So you need to be supplementing with, at the very minimum, calcium and vitamin D. And then there's a whole other list of things you can do to support yourself while taking prednisone. And I include those in my prednisone checklist. So you should download it. I have more to share with you about the treatment of GCA, but I want you to know that this prednisone checklist exists and it also has the top seven mistakes people make while taking prednisone. And I don't want you to make those. So download this prednisone checklist so that you don't have to make them. All right, moving on. What other possible treatments could you use to help out with GCA? Would Tylenol help? No. Would ibuprofen help? Not likely. Well, is there anything else? Well, there is an autoimmune uh, immunosuppressant medication called methotrexate. It is originally, it was originally created to help out with cancer, but it is generally considered to be safer, but not necessarily as effective as prednisone for GCA. So you could try that. Maybe a combination of the methotrexate and the prednisone could get you at a, to a lower dose of prednisone to help you find a balance of less side effects. But it's often not well tolerated. It causes a lot of GI upset, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Is there anything else? Yes, there is a recently FDA approved drug called tocilizumab or Actemra. And it was trialed compared to prednisone and it was shown to be effective, but not that effective. And it comes with its own host of side effects, specifically a higher risk for infections. So it works, but it's just, it's not a slam dunk. Prednisone works a lot better. So if you absolutely cannot tolerate prednisone and you've been on it for a while, you could ask your doctor to see if you could try the Actemra. Are there any other diseases or conditions you might anticipate having? Well, what's interesting is prednisone is given for two conditions for long-term, and those are PMR and GCA, polymyalgia rheumatica, and giant cell arteritis, and they can often be related. So this is like the book about those that I've read. And a person can start out with PMR and it can progress to GCA, or they can start out with GCA and it can progress to PMR, or you can have one and never have the other. It's pretty unique, but one characteristic is it's usually in Northern European people, you know, blonde hair and freckles kind of people, um, that might have it and that were otherwise perfectly healthy. And then one day, suddenly this happens, whether it's 
the temporal arteritis, headache, blurry vision, things like that, or it's the polymyalgia rheumatica with the bilateral joint uh, shoulder pain. They usually happen suddenly and they can wax and wane. And so if you have GCA and you're suddenly having shoulder pain, it could be that you have progressed to polymyalgia rheumatica. And while I've given you a lot of doom and gloom, I do want you to know that prednisone is truly a miracle. Like it saved my life. Without it, I probably would have bled to death. Without it, people with GCA probably would either have a stroke, an aneurysm, or go blind. And I'm so grateful that it exists. It is truly one of the miracles of modern medicine. And so if you have to take it, then you should download my prednisone checklist so you know exactly what to do to minimize the complications to you so that the you get the fewest side effects possible. Just click the link below to sign up now to download your own prednisone checklist. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.